Good evening. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Dr. Samah al the clinical pharmacist in Greya General Hospital, and I, I will be serving you today as a moderator. You will be hearing a presentation from Dr. Yusuf al -Aumi. He will be speaking to us on role of pharmacist in enhanced medication safety. Dr. Yusuf al former head of general administration of pharmaceutical care administration, former head of National Drug Information Center, former head of research and development department at pharmaceutical care administration at Ministry of, uh, of Health in Saudi Arabia. Dr. Alomi is a, a product of King Saud University confirmed with the degree of Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science in the year 1992. After six years of higher study, he earned his Master of Clinical Pharmacy from the same university in the 1998. He is uh, an affiliated clinical instructor of Purdue uh, University in the USA. He is an adjunct assistant professor at King Saud University College of Pharmacy. Now moving along to our session, please welcome Dr. Yusuf al Omi to deliver the presentation on this very timely subject. Kindly notice that the question will be at the end of the session and post, post it in the Q&A icon so our speaker will answer them gladly. Dr. Yusuf, you can start now, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I wish to thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I wish to thank uh, Saudi Center of Patient Safety as a collaboration with the WHO and a collaboration with the WHO Collaborating Center on the Patient Safety Policies and Strategies. Today, we'll discuss something about the role of pharmacists and enhancing medication safety. How can we establish medication safety? Uh, how can we involve as a pharmacist uh, to prevent medication error currently and in the future? I need just to stop the slide share and uh, turn back again because the slide is not moving. Okay. Um, I don't have any relationship with the financial support from any company related to our topic. Uh, today, we'll discuss some, something and we'll introduce our topic about the importance of medication safety and medication error. Then how can well, we involve pharmacists in the, in, in the medication safety uh, parameters and model? And you need to be familiar how can we establish pharmacy strategic planning for medication safety and understand self-assessment and the hospital practice and community pharmacies uh, and the medications safety model. And uh, what's the, uh, the, the target of medication safety in a program? The pharmacists he can involve uh, in the practice. And uh, we need to recognize uh, the pharmacy quality management after establishing medication safety program by, by pharmacists. And we'll end up about well, the, 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 the feedback of patient satisfaction on the pharmacy practice and emphasizing of that medication safety. I think everybody that's familiar with the uh, tough prescription with the very bad ha handwriting, uh, you cannot read it. And uh, Mary Talato medication error, this is old, very old has been done in, in uh, practice in Saudi, but nowadays a lot of changing after, uh, pre uh, after several slides, I will show you how can we improve our system with uh, starting with this very bad uh, prescription handwriting to the electronic system. Um, starting with the medication error in the Middle East with uh, uh, one of the uh, study has been discussed on medication error in the Middle East, including Saudi and the systematic review. They showed the error, error rates varies from seven to 90% of the prescribing error and also from 9% to the 80% of administration error. The most, uh, in the study they showed the most common time of prescribing reported was incorrect dose. And that's been uh, emphasized the role of pharmacists because the dosing and incorrect dose, either underdose or overdose, um, um, you need to include and uh, involve the pharmacist to prevent this issue and to prevent any 
of progress of the medication outreach to the patient. With a longer frequency, a longer strength, and also this is emphasized the knowledge of the pharmacist and the medication, uh, and medication uh, information. And this is the list of the, the, the study has been involved in the systematic review. Another studies before almost the four years back with uh, almost the 42 or 45 studies met the inclusion criteria and they found the prescribing error was reported as much as high reach to the 91% at the, for the sample of the primary uh, care prescription and analysis in one study. And in a range in the prescribing error from seven to 56%, almost we can say 50% of the prescribing uh, containing error. Adverse drug events were reported in the OCAD uh, from 8 to 16, uh, bear 100 admission, uh, lead to the admission of the prescribing error. Another systematic review with 18 article with a different medical Middle East country with a total almost 58,000 uh, people or subject, and uh, they report almost uh, more than 50% uh, of them they got medications error. And the bull analysis showed the number of error was mainly prescribing error, followed by general prescribing error and the commission error. That information, they give you potential um, uh, thing, you need to involve the pharmacist and, and enhance uh, the medication safety and prevent medication error that reach to the patient. Uh, another study we conducted here to uh, assess the knowledge of, of physician of advisory ASHI reporting system, and we found, um, um, this is this recently published, we found a lot of people, more than 90%, they are not familiar uh, with uh, how to report uh, uh, of adverse reaction, uh, the uh, progress of adverse reaction, and uh, uh, the poor uh, documentation of adverse reaction. That means the burden uh, practice on the uh, on the pharmacist, you need to take uh, the job and lead everything in the documentation of the adverse drug reaction. Another study we has conducted among dentists, and we evaluate them or assist them about their knowledge of the medication sa safety. And also, we unfortunately we didn't find as much, almost 50 percent, they're not familiar with the medication safety because most of them they are busy with the practice. They are not concerned about the, the parameter of medication error. They are not document medication error. They, they, they did not put any solution to prevent medication error in the, in the future. This that all the causes or all, all the re reason and to to. Uh, to focus and zoom about the pharmacist and the role of pharmacists and to enhance the established medication error system in the, in the culture, either in the public or during uh, with the healthcare professional uh, in the practice. Uh, another study for drug-related problem the, as, as economic burden, and this is study has been in the state with the uh, very old study, they show how the high uh, economic uh, burden to the medication error need to the one, one, uh, $177 billion annually, uh, the, the cost of medication related uh, morbidity and mortality. And another study we conducted here in Saudi, uh, it's not, uh, it's lower than in the state, but still uh, there is average, we can say the average one, 1,022, you uh, a billion dollar uh, as a cause of a drug related problem with the medication error and uh, adverse drug reaction, drug poisoning, drug compliance. This is the list of SHB, American Society of Health System Pharmacy drug related problem. We send a survey to the public and uh, the healthcare professional and we ask them uh, how frequent you are uh, you're suffering from drug related problem and we identify each drug related problem how frequent you uh, you are suffering and uh, how much does it co cause you cost you after suffering from this problem and uh, the the and this is the our, our result our conclusion um uh, uh, this is our result from all the survey and we found um this is expression of the healthcare professional and Oh, and, and, and the public, and they, are t they was telling us about the cost, how much burden of a drug-related problem. This is can uh, uh, give you very red line 
and, and very red flesh point. Be careful as a pharmacist, there is a lot of potential drug related problem with emphasizing to the um, medication error, the drug interaction, uh, non compliance, or any type of drug related problem, and they give you high opportunity to involve you as a pharmacist. Everybody, we are, we are familiar with the, uh, the, the sequences of the medications, uh, either starting from uh, procurement, then prescribing, transcribing, preparation, dispensing and administration and monitoring. And the, all these uh, stages of the medication use uh, until reach to the patient, each step, the pharmacist, they have very potential rule to involve himself to prevent any medication error uh, and to prevent any adverse event reach to the patient. Okay, you need to evaluate before you, uh, you can assist yourself, you have set a plan. And before 10 years back, we set up uh, as a strategic planning of general administration pharmaceutical care here in Saudi. And we set up the four general goal and provide complete pharmaceutical care, care with the safety and best practice, which is very important because the safety and best practice was the first goal, a strategic goal at that time. And uh, the second thing goal that can enhance medication safety was to provide complete pharmacy electronic services. And we are uh, everybody familiar with the automation system can prevent uh, medication error reach to the patient. And uh, after uh, this, we, we set up vision and mission, five strategic goal and 15 initiative and 83 project. After starting so division, we evaluate the previous, uh, uh, previous strategic planning and we update according to the new vision in Saudi 2030. We set up with the new vision mission and values with the five strategic goal. Um, uh, with updating with the 14 initiative and expand more with the 19 project. Some project is almost finished and some of them you need to, to, to ongoing, not to stop it at all. Um, um, you need to set up strategic planning with emphasizing to certain area like medication safety or medication error. One of the things you have to think about is you have to assess yourself. If you want to set up plan, you need to assess yourself to see what is your level in the medication safety practice in your culture at healthcare professional or either with the public sitting. Evaluate them. There is a lot of uh, survey you can evaluate. One of the famous uh, uh, assessment uh, uh, tool you can utilize an institution of safe medication practice. I think before 10 years back, we have a collaboration with them and set up a survey, maybe special for Saudi. You need, to, you need to take all the survey from medication self-assessment for ISMB. This is the list according to your need, according to your demand. It's not cost you any money, just, uh, just uh, receive all, all, all the, the, uh, the tool and the barometer, just read it. You can change it, updating accordingly, according to the situation. We, we, have, uh, we have done it to the medication safety for hospital. You can utilize for ambulatory care or community as you need. If there is something wrong with the high alert, you can utilize it. If you have a problem with the uh, antithrombotic agent and therapy, you can also assess. You need to choose. What have we done? We choose in the hospital and the, and, and the community, uh, community and uh, primary and ambulatory care pharmacy. The survey for ISMB based on 10 elements on the patient safety related to the patient safety and drug formation, communication of drug order and other drug formation, drug labeling, packaging, nomenclature, and also drug standardized dosage and distribution, medication devices, environmental factor, and staffing better, workflow competencies of your education staff and patient counseling and medication process and risk management. And we have done a survey. Uh, this is an example a study has been published with the survey distributed to the 13 primary care center and 23, uh, 23 community pharmacy. And we evaluate and as, as a comparison with the USA ISMB result. And we found uh, almost comparable, a little bit maybe lower than in the state, but still, he, he can give you a hint where is the lowest percentage you can start with. 
like, like, like chaos, maybe that lowest percentage for the primary care center was the drug formation. That means the drug formation resources or something, there is something wrong in this element. You need to dig it detail to see what's the problem to prevent medication error. Maybe the second thing, it's a drug standardization, drug dosage and distribution. You need to go there in detail and, 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 and emphasize and investigate what is the problem? How can we improve in the situation? Also in the community pharmacy, maybe a little bit different and higher, better than, but still there is some, some, uh, some resemble with the primary care center drug formation resources. Maybe still it's need to, uh, it's need to improve this system uh, or this element and dig it detail, what is the problem? Uh, do we have all the drug formation resources once we need it uh, to educate the patient, to counsel the patient, to provide any, um, uh, any, any advices to the physician or to establish medication safety? Because all drug formation resources is very important to prevent any uh, drug related to problem or medication error. This uh, assessment can give you a clue about your situation before starting anything because it's a medication safety program is very, very huge and very expandable. If you expand it, it can expand and expand. But you need to assess yourself and prioritize your, your demand and your needs. Set up the first thing, the second thing, based on your assessment result. And we have the assessment during Hajj mass gathering, Hajj season, and uh, the, uh, we evaluate the hospital. The hosp our hospital at that time, better than community pharmacy and better than a primary care center, maybe better than even in the state and, and some element like, like patient counseling or patient education was 70, um, the, the percentage was 75% as comparable with the state hospital, almost 68%. That means it's good point for us. You can, um, uh, you, you, in the result, they can uh, show you what's the weakness point, what is the, what the, the strength point, uh, and, uh, for all healthcare institution, how can uh, start, when to start, what's the element you need to start with. This is very important, the strategic plan. The second point is the assessment of medication safety and culture at your healthcare organization or your public. We set up medication safety program at that time. Uh, we set up medication safety committees and uh, we update the medication safety reporting errors and uh, medication error advanced reaction reporting, drug quality, drug quality, that means it, if there is any bad quality for manufacturing, because if there is bad quality and reach the patient, may have not uh, improve our patient and maybe um, get error to the patient, mislabeling, uh, there is no name, all these bad quality in the manufacturing. And this is very important to report it. Uh, then we set up some program for education, basic, Medi uh, education course for medication so safety. At that time, we mandated for all healthcare professionals, you need to tell them to educate any new staff, either not a nurse or pharmacist or healthcare professional, join the hospital. He has to take basic uh, education courses on medication safety to at least to give him awareness about medication safety to not get mistake in the, during the practice. We establish medication safety officer for each hospital, and uh, we do assessment for community and the primary care center. We do posters, awareness, and distributed. And then we including some uh, cl clinical management in the medication safety, like, like pain management uh, at that time, because we, we're suffering from a lot of mistake in the pain management during uh, uh, pain measure for boss operative or something just orally. And also uh, if, uh, another thing, if you want to, uh, to evaluate any medication, how much uh, the level of safety once we include any new drug in our formulary administrative health. And we'll discuss in detail now about Little Bank, what's the impact for each one of them uh, about some element of medication safety program and give you our experiences. This is the medic medication safety course. We, uh, we, gave all, we gave to the almost 7,500 healthcare professional. Majority of them was nurses, followed by physician and pharmacists. I remember at that time, because we established before 10 years back, uh, at, to, to, uh, at uh, 2012, uh, 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 they were received 15 drug-related deaths at that, at that time. After starting courses on a yearly basis, 
the number of, of, of drug-related deaths will decrease from 12 to 13 to 14 until 15, 8 to 0. So 0 to 6 to 0, because this is, you need to do awareness, a big awareness, because all the staff, they are taking medication safety course, and you need to aware about them, how to prevent, how to prescribe, how to double check, how to prevent any medication, because most of healthcare professionals, they need awareness. If you do that, that assessment, that, that system, that means all drug-related problem and reporting for death and sentinel event will decrease and lead to switch from, uh, from drug-related death to the near miss. Near miss, that means the drug or the, the mistake reached to the patient, but has been uh, 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 prevented by healthcare professional or involving ph pharmacists. All the lectures has been delivered by the pharmacists at that time. And uh, we established a medica national medication and reporting system. And we established as, as very simple thing. Uh, we put a format as regular manual. Uh, if you have any medication error, you can click it and we classify it how the severity based on international standard. We make it very simple. And uh, we highly recommend that the pharmacist, he was the one who documented, document all medication error and reports on, on, on monthly basis. Um, what is the report of medication error? What's the severity? He need to analyze it to, to know the causes of medication error, the potential of medication error, how can we solve it? Uh, through the medication safety committee for each health uh, healthcare organization. And, and um, uh, um, back to medication errors at that time, when this is on the hospital, we uh, uh, adopt this to medication error and we save a lot of money by preventing estimation as uh, uh, cost avoidance by preventing medication error with almost, almost one year, with almost uh, contact 800 patients, we're saving almost more than 1,000 US dollars uh, at that time for just one year. If you continue, continue applying the system, that means you will uh, improve our patient quality of life, and also you will decrease the economic burden on the healthcare system. This is another example for impact of pharmacist intervention. That means if there is any medication error, the pharmacist is involved and stop the medication error. And we prevent a lot of mistakes. Uh, we change the system for prescribing, uh, either, either uh, to, um, correct everything and prevent medication error rate to the patients based on the, uh, on the medication safety. For national adverse reaction, we started at that time, then they switched to the Saudi FDA. Now all the uh, all adverse reaction they're reporting directly to Saudi FDA and they will take care of it. But at least at that time, just we established and we start with a simple format and let the people to document if there is any adverse drug reaction are reported to the general committee of medication safety. This is the format we started with. And then, then we switch it to the Saudi FDA. Saudi FDA, they change the format and make it very simple. But at that time, if you don't, don't have Saudi uh, like uh, um, um, uh, drug administration uh, or, uh, or registration bodies um, not regulated for adverse reaction, you can make it as simple at your institution, uh, make it very simple and document it and let the pharmacy to involve to document everything because if you document all that there is action for any medication, especially for new medication that we admitted to the hospital and you newly added to, or, or to, or to your formality, this is, can give you hints. Um, do we need to continue with the drug or not? Is it uh, very harmful or not? Maybe some company, they start to marketing, not follow up by uh, boss marketing surveillance. This is part of both, both marketing surveillance and an institution. You can stop it, remove it, and prevent uh, any uh, drug-related problem reach to the patient. For drug quality, this is very important. Also, we start with uh, our, 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 our higher administration, our higher uh, national committee. Then we switch it to the Saudi FDA, Saudi FDA to take action. Because if we found any bad quality for manufacturing, that means harm to the patient, 
we, we need to report it to them and the company, they will discuss with the, uh, with the manufacturer to change either bad quality or even what we call, there is a system what's called looks alike, sound alike. And we will, uh, we'll, uh, I'm gonna to explain it to, in, uh, in a few slides. If you have a two medication, it's very simple, resemble, looks alike in the name, in the trade name, generic name, and uh, the pharmacist may be confused during dispensing, uh, dispensing or preparation medication lead to the error. We need to discuss with the manufacturer to the Saudi FDA or regulatory registration body, change the packaging to prevent medication error that lead to the patient. And this is the format at that time we are using. Okay, and then another system establishing for medication safety intervention documentation. If you have any uh, higher dose, lower dose, missed dose, uh, uh, incorrect strength, as we have seen in the systematic review, the high percentage of the incorrect dose and uh, the strength and, and, and the medication errors, we established uh, in pharmacy intervention to prevent any medication error uh, in the future. This is study has been conducted uh, with the private sector and in the, as a clinical pharmacist, they do um, um, the documentation of the pharmacy intervention. And also we saving a lot of, of money. We improve our system. We improve the quality of life of the patient. Uh, and we found um, most of the medication, they involve the pharmacist to prevent medication error like anti-infective medications and cardiovascular medication. I can and can one of the ca ca cardiovascular medication, it's high risk medication may lead to the patient if there is any, any error in the cardiovascular medi medication. And uh, the economic burden after stopping all the, uh, after stopping all the medication error, we're saving a lot of money in the, in, 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 in the same hospital with another publication reach to the half million US dollar uh, annually uh, just for preventing medication error. Now you are saving life and you are um, raw outcome the patient and also you are saving uh, any econ economic burden uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, after preventing and implementing medication error and then after involve the pharmacist with the medication safety foundation. Also, you can do yourself for assessment. Uh, we discussed about ISMB. Uh, self-assessment, we come up with uh, our KSA, uh, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia self-assessment for medication safety. You can adopt your system accordingly. You can take it, you can utilize it, change it, and put your need, put your demand, uh, change everything and what we have done. And uh, for uh, at that time, we badly need in the, for, for, for pain management because we found a lot of mistakes. We have done a self-assessment that anyone he want he want he wish to start with a pain management program and utilize pain management. He has to do the, their self assessment to evaluate all the medication safety related to the pain management. And this is the list you can utilize it and you can you adopt it, uh, your system accordingly at, at at your organization at your country and you can adopt uh, adopt it and implement it. Uh, another additional program you can uh, enhance it and, and establish at uh, your institution looks alike, sounds alike. As, uh, as, as we discussed it before, drug quality reporting system, adult tab in handwriting, it could be as a lot 10 milligram, B complex, Vascoban, Tagamet, Tigritol, Kinine, Kinidine, it looks like, no, a numerical and normacol. Um, you need to evaluate your medication, a prescribing uh, pattern at that time, because each country has different trade name and, and different genetic name and, and different prescribing habits by physician. You need to uh, put a system for looks alike, sound alike, and evaluate your prescribing pattern for looks alike, sound alike on a yearly basis, because there is a new medication coming in the tender or, or purchasing, uh, another packaging, different packaging, and you need to evaluate it annually. <coughs> Sorry. You need to evaluate it annually to prevent any medication error. And I'll give you just an example. This is genomycin carbamphenicol. By uh, high workload or uh, you, uh, there is no double check, it's very easy to dispense genomycin instead of carbamphenicol and, and transversa. And this is very important. You need 
call the company, please change it. If you have a system for drug quality reporting system, you can implement any mistake during uh, dispensing. Also, looks like you see, it looks alike in, in, in one phase, or also when you resemble. It's very easy to get a mistake in the practice, especially if you are working in the pharmacy and you dispense medication uh, in the health, at healthcare uh, institution. You see, this is two step. It's very very simple on one side, but two side then side are totally different. It's folic acid and um basketball has seen in a butyl bromide this is very important to establish if you discover this way you need to discuss with the your regulatory affairs please tell the manufacturer to change it to update it and uh, to change it to the new system uh, to make it very easy and the pharmacy can recognize it very easy before dispensing uh, and prevent medication error also, you know, American Society of Assistant Pharmacists, they are put a standardized system, they standardize it for first safety initiative. That means if they have parenteral medication, they standardize the, uh, the drug concentration, how, how, uh, how much it will be, um, not to make it as a range, just fix it with a sp uh, specific amount to prevent any, uh, any mistake during preparation. And also we have done it, and. Uh, uh, we, we standardize uh, drug concentration for parenteral IV infusion as a new initiative in Saudi. And in terms of that, we are not only standardized the, 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 the amount of medication like 20 milligram, beta melon. No, we either even standardize the, the package or the volume, how much we would like, let's just say, amica C. Amica C is coming in the 500. Uh, how, how much we can dissolve it in 100 normal saline or dextrose. We standardize in the, the volume to prevent any mistake, any mistake. And then we put what's the stability of the solution, if you put it in the room temperature or, 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 or refrigerator and how much rate of, uh, rate of administration in the, in the big bag. And this is very important. If you, if you make like this situation and distribute it to all your staff, especially if you don't have uh, IV admixture setting, that means, uh, and during awareness of medication safety course, that means you are uh, make awareness for physician, make awareness for, for, for nursing during preparation and administration, uh, administration medication to the patient. That can prevent a lot of errors. And uh, this is an example for pediatric, also Pediatric, a lot to think, a lot of mistake may occur. You need to standardize it to prevent any medication error may occur to the patient. And also for emergency, emergency medication, you can, in the literature, a lot of error, you can find it. You need to standardize it. Well, we, we put a list for all the emergency medication, uh, like aminophilin, heparin, insulin, what that, that commonly used in the, in the ICU for adults and pediatric. And we put uh, the the concentration, what's the standard formula, how much uh, milligram you dissolve it in the, in the certain volume, and which t t type of certain volume, is there D5 water or normal saline, what's the rate of infusion you need to give to patient. Well, if there is a range, just standardize everything. And also, if you have a smart infusion bomb, put all the rate of infusion and, and, and configure it in the smart infusion bomb, and let the smart infusion bomb to prevent any medication at all may occur to the patient and stop all the mistake. And this is the list you can utilize it. You can take it, it's, a, it's published in the literature, you can utilize it, you can change it, update it according to your system and according to the uh, how much uh, you are using in the concentration. That can't be, um, can prevent a lot of medication errors. And this is uh, for neonate and pediatric. We pour, make it for both for adult and pediatric and neonate. Uh, another tool for enhancing medication error, you need to establish guidelines as a collaboration with the medical people and uh, the nursing set up like we face a, a, a lot of mistakes on DVT prophylaxis, pain management, antibiotic surgical prophylaxis. And I give you an example for electrolyte replacement therapy uh, like, th like this one. We put it as we call it physician order standardized. It's not only concentration. No, according to the level, of the to say you have a, 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 um, uh, any, any, uh, any potassium or uh, the level of potassium is low. If there is you have a, a potassium level for certain patients such and such, 
how much we suggested to give the patient, how much millimole you need to absorb it in certain volume and which type of certain volume and how much millimole you need to give him per hours and what's the maximum you need to uh, to tell all the healthcare provider during the demonstration. And we listed all these and we changed all the concentration and instead of coming potassium chloride two millimole per ml coming from, from manufacturing, no, we change it all and we switch it at the general standard concentration and we replace the system in the electronic system. You can make it as a format, just normal one and distribute it. If any physician who wants to prescribe medication, he can click any one of them and let the nurse to prepare it. If you don't have IV admixture or you can prepare it down the state. If you have a pharmacy and, and, and you have IV admixture, you can prepare it and send it. And there is no a, a lot of discussion of the concentration because this is, should be approved by the pharmacy and therapeutic committee inside your hospital. Once approved, this is our guideline. You need to all healthcare, healthcare professional to follow to prevent any mistake because IV electrolyte replacement therapy, there are a lot of errors, especially if there is a potassium. Potassium, it's a very dangerous uh, element may kill the patient very easy if there is any mistake. And also we make it for, for, for neonates and for the pediatric. Uh, and instead of that, we establish standardized because you know there is a customized and there is standardized and there is ready-made now TBN, total parental nutrition. Uh, we found a lot of healthcare professionals that are not familiar with the TBN because this is a job of pharmacists. And we involve the pharmacists because we don't have a lot of clinical pharmacists and uh, we don't have a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, training pharmacists uh, specialized in the TBN. And to prevent medication error, we switch it from the customized to the standardized. Standardized, we put as uh, normal, uh, as average, that demand that they needed for, for neonate and adult and pediatric for first day, second day, third day. The physician, if he wants to prescribe any medication, he has to go to the N1. N1, we mean it as a fair state. He just uh, revise it. Uh, if he agree, he have just uh, click, 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 and sign it. Uh, second day and third day. We divide it according to the American Society of Voluntary and Internal Nutrition as a guideline. Um, we put the one third of the quantity, second third, and third, third of the quantity that if the patient he needed for the TBN, if he uh, tolerate all the, the quantity. Otherwise, he can uh, he can customize it. But at least there is a roadmap and there is a way to guide our people for physician because most of physician that not familiar and the pharmacy sometimes is is as uh, they have a lot of workload. We are guiding our physician. This is the way. At least uh, if you don't have any background knowledge for TBN, this is the way you can just little bit. At least we're covering more than 80% of the standardized and, and, and the normal dose. He can just a little bit change it and uh, make life easy for all the healthcare professionals and reach the optimal level for the patient. And another thing, sometimes we don't have the medication. It's not available for any certain reason, for any reason. Uh, you have a shortage of salt by manufacturing. You have... Uh, you do, it's not available for, for manufacturing for any reason. You have to put a system, we suggest system for therapeutic interchange and what's the equivalent for a, a therapeutic interchange. We put as uh, the medications and what's the alternative? If you don't have, if you don't have a sick load, uh, what's the medication we can choose? We can, you can choose uh, cephalexime and acetyl. And also if you have a, a cephradine, if there is no cephradine IV, is there alternative for cephazolin, we can choose it. If you, if you don't have a cloxacillin, can we choose a cloxacillin? How much equivalence dose? This is very important to tell the people to, because if there is a, uh, maybe to prevent any mistake and also to keep the drug therapy continuously and improve your patient. If you don't have erythromycin, what's the alternative? What's the equivalent dose? This is a general uh, a suggestion. You need to, uh, definitely you need to revise it at your healthcare institution and standardized system for therapeutic interchange. And another additional uh, new program we already started, like infection control. You know, the pharmacists, uh, they are preparing medication, but you need to put infection control pharmacists to, uh, to evaluate the preparation, like IV admixture, to take the culture, uh, because if there is a contamination for IV preparation, for TBN, for any medication, 
you contaminate it, if there is no any infection control, if there is bad uh, control of infection during preparation, if you if you not follow the standard, you get contaminate all the medication after preparation, and you are transferred the now the infection to the patient and may get worse instead of get useful of your medication. And this is very very important. Be careful. It's a mistake in the state. There is a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, infection related to the pharmacy preparation, and especially for neonate lead to the death. But be Excuse careful. Excuse me, Doctor Yusuf. Five five minutes remaining. Okay. Uh, another thing we have done it we, because we are saving a lot of people. They are we, they wish to fast in Ramadan, and a lot of position they switch. Uh, uh, during uh, during Ramadan, instead of giving him three times a day, they give him with the 12 hour three times a day, and instead of switch him to the twice daily, and there is a lot of mistake, and uh, he is not getting uh, full uh, medication, uh, therapeutic liver leach and kill, for example, bacteria or treat uh, the patient. And we standardize, we put a system for Ramadan pharmaceutical care, and we put a medication, what the alternative during Ramadan, and instead of them three times, four times a day, switch it to twice or once a day, maybe suitable for a patient and uh, let the patient to fasting, not to break the fast during Ramadan, let them continue. And also for, for we put a system for medication safety for national mass gathering pharmaceutical care during Hajj period. And also now recently, a lot of companies, they are preparing outsourcing and instead of we are established IV admixture, uh, some, uh, some private company, they are preparing and send it to the uh, send it to the to the pharmacy. Okay, just uh, I hope all the people reach the new technology and and some we are reaching almost more than 50 60 percent of our institution. They are using new technology, either electronic prescription or they are using automated uh, total volunteer nutrition or pixels machine, automated distribution cabinet, or um, uh, repackaging all the old smart infusion bump. I hope all the content to reach it because once we reach it, that means you you prevent a lot of mistake and medications error. This is just uh, uh, if you are establish uh, pharmacy automation starting from preparation until you are using robotic system until you reach to the this is from pharmacy until reach to the uh, nursing and then the dispensing cabinet fixes machine and etc. And uh, then in the during uh, room patient, you need double check the patient to care certification before give him or administer the medication to prevent any mistake uh, during drug therapy. And we'll know that pharmacy automation, 78% uh, of uh, can be avoided during using automated dispensing cabinet and also introduction automation in one UK hospital reducing dispensing error by 50%. Another thing you can establish in, uh, as a clinical pharmacy program, we establish a drug formation, boising toxicology, and critical care, and total volunteer nutrition. And uh, this is evaluate the cost efficiency of clinical pharmacy. And we found each uh, dollar you spend it in the clinical pharmacy is going to save almost $100. It's very huge in the state, almost $1. You can save also 3 to $5. But here in Saudi, you can save a lot of things. But you need to evaluate your system, which is, uh, which uh, clinical pharmacy, especially do you need to prevent all the medications error. And this is the for total voluntary nutrition, how much we are saving money or decreasing uh, medication related uh, problem. And this is the economic impact, almost the half million uh, dollar annually for pharmacy intervention in the voluntary nutrition and prevent all the mistake lead to the patient. Uh, and, and also, if we if we replace a pharmacist uh, to prescribe TBN in a city position, we're gonna uh, save almost more than, uh, I can say more than one, 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 one million uh, US dollar annually, uh, if we replace it all the pharmacist because he is enhancing the uh, medication safety, he, he can prescribe it very well, especially if you have a, train, a trained person in the, in the TBN. Uh, you can establish what call center or drug formation receiving a call to prevent any medication related to problem uh, receiving. It's very simple. We established a calling center at Ministry of Health 937 receiving a call and we evaluate our performance 
a lot of things we are and we are saving money we are most of people they ask about uh, 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 they have some some antibiotic frequent drug administration dosing and everything and this is kind of prevent medications at all in the public this is for a cost of rising of, of drug formation in the mental hospital that's saving a lot of money and um, you need to establish i was just covering two things uh, patient satisfaction and quality management you need to establish pharmacy quality management to uh, follow up all the medication safety and this is the survey has been done in saudi and this is our list reach the six percent or sixty percent some hospital according to the element of quality management and we ask the people uh, and we ask 100 hospital uh, how frequently you implement uh, this element of quality management and uh, there is a low, big variation of the hospital but at least we establish you need to establish this is not consuming any money you establish you put a course of the uh, of the quality management educate the people sit uh, kpi a key performance indicator and follow up the people to uh, improve our system in the medication safety and also don't forget to get feedback from patients you need to ask them about his, their satisfaction and we make a survey for three hospital and we standardize uh, what's called patient satisfaction about medication availability medication patient counseling domain did, uh, did the pharmacist counseling properly how it communicates very effectively did he give you information about such and such medication, about the basic reaction, if we are missing the medication, how can we solve it? If we have a toxicity, how can we solve it? This is information for public awareness is very important to prevent any drug related problem and medication uh, error uh, after dispensing. They need to ask your, your people, your public, and give you feedback. And this is, you can assess yourself, where is your mistake and where is your weakness points to improve it to prevent medications errors. Okay, uh, I think is uh, family education and, and patient counseling very important to the pharmacist because can prevent a lot of medication error during this dancing. And I think it's uh, rural pharmacists, they have a excellent, very potential, very comprehensive rule to implement and establish medication safety including all the uh, all the elements of medication safety with very simple skills, just the training and, and educate the people. You can prevent a lot of medications error and improve patient quality of life and also can decrease your economic burden at your, your healthcare system. Um, thank you very much for your listening and I wish to thank again uh, Saudi Patient Safety Center and the WHO for giving the, the, uh, this opportunity to give this lecture about rural pharmacists for enhancing medication safety. And it's my pleasure to receive any, uh, any any queries or question from your side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Youssef, for addressing this interesting topic. Dear participants, now we will answer the question. Kindly post your question in the uh, Q and A icon. So our speaker will answer them gladly. There is a question from Mustafa Saadeddin. Is it acceptable to have an electronic medication administration record that copies the physician order automatically? Yes, because uh, electronic system, it's coming from all the stages. As we discussed, uh, starting from procurement, you uh, enter all the medications. Then after that uh, preparation, once you prepare it, you enter it, uh, prescribing. Uh, once you prescribe all the medications by physician or by clinical pharmacy, according to your system, it's coming to the pharmacy. The pharmacy to evaluate. If he agree, he will give order to uh, to the nurse to administer. And also in the nurse, once he administer medication or the pharmacies, once he administer some medication like a vaccine and et cetera to the community pharmacy, he can document it in the electronic prescription. Also valuable. According to the system electronic that you are utilizing, um, you need to discuss with, with, the, with the software company, uh, either Epic or Cerner or any, 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 any local company, um, if there is a, a option for 
For administration and documentation, yes, they can give you a lot of things according to Unimad, according to you need, you need to discuss with the, your, your local company. Yes. Uh, Mustafa asks, uh, what, uh, what is the difference between significant medication error and near-miss uh, hazardous uh, condition and at-risk behavior that have the potential to cause patient harm? You know, you need to, uh, there is a system standardized uh, starting from uh, zero until uh, I think uh, seven or 10. Uh, sometimes potential, potential, uh, it is, it can give you, uh, looks like high risk. Be careful, this is dangerous medication. It's not coming, nobody prescribed. But if there is prescription or somebody prescribe it, uh, reach to the patient and you prevent it, this is near miss. It's not reach to the patient. But if it's uh, reach to the patient, not harmful, they classified it. Sometime, and then after that, they reach the patient, but they needed to uh, visit a patient the clinic, there's another time. Then after that, they need to emergency visit, that's another time. Admission to the hospital, visit critical care, all these classification. This is standardized in the, the world. And I highly recommend to uh, categorize your uh, potential error significant. It's big word. Uh, it's general word, but it's better to categorize it. Near miss. It's not to the patient. Whatever the the level of error, because once you not reach the patient, it's near still not near match because uh, nothing happened to the patient. It's not reachable to the patient. But once reach now, what's the progress after reach? That did, did, did the patient go to the hospital? Did he harmful, uh, any, any significant uh, okay to the patient? Did he admit to the hospital? This is now another case. Um, um, they are now you, after reaching the patient, now we continue classification. After near mess, there's another category, uh, the level, the another level, and, and, and et cetera. So you need uh, to standardize you, the level of dangerous and risk once they reach the patient, starting from, potential as be careful as high risk then need miss and etc okay there is a question uh, we are using uh, ybro system for electronic record and a prescription but there is many falses which elect which electronic record application Will you suggest best to save time, big error while prescri prescribing and save patient not get hurt? Okay, uh, yeah, I think if I understood you, you, your question, you ask about alerting system or alarming system that automatically check and give you alarm once the mistake is occurred during prescribing and during procurement or dispensing. Yes. There is a system because in the electronic prescription, uh, it's option from the company. Some company, they, uh, they give you just without high alert, but you need to request it from your local company. I need high alert system. But once you, they give you an example for high alert because they have to sit down with you and choose what's the medication, you need to be alert uh, once there is a mistake, like for example, uh, less the medication it's uh, prohibited during pregnancy, or less the medication prohibited during breastfeeding, or less the medication prohibited uh, for renal failure, or hepatic failure, or overdose for uh, common practice use of medication. This is you need to involve and discuss with the software company in IT and tell them this is the category of high alert medication. Or for example, you can use all the high high risk medication according to the ISMB and categorize it. And once they alert, they request a view. Which type of alerting? Uh, it is just alert, uh, or we can prevent. We, we will not allow the prescribing uh, because alerting there is a stages or, or per level. It's very high dangerous. They are very simple. Now, no. Uh, according to your system, you need to establish with the software and choose and put your or your suggestion or your recommendation the software can build up your high alert system now once you build it up in the, in the electronic prescription now 
if you if the physician enter any medication if there is it wrong they can give us can give you a lid once it's right they will pass it now uh, and, and, and once they reach the patient once they reach the uh, pharmacist on the same thing and the same thing if he enter number uh, strong or uh, dispensing was wrong all these can give you a lid or sometimes privilege Privilege, it's different because maybe his ANT is not uh, is not allowable to prescribe cardi cardiovascular medication. And once he enter on any cardiovascular medication, they give you a late system. Be careful, or high alert. This is a drug. Should not you cannot you are not allowed to prescribe the medication. You need to uh, consult your, your cardiologist to prescribe it instead of you. This is a lot of system in the high alert. But this is it's exist. It's in the practice. But you need to discuss with the local company which type of high, because high alert system is very huge. You need to choose specific and, and your demand at your local institution. Yes, there is another question. Is there any rule uh, of uh, artificial intelligence? Uh, I think it, uh, yes, yeah, for pharmacy automation, yes. Nowadays, uh, uh, for pharmacy automation, yes, uh, they're ro robotic now, the robotic they are preparing uh, the medication, especially if you in the IV admixture, uh, especially if you have oncologic medication. You know, the chemotherapy, uh, a lot of, of pharmacists, they are reluctant to uh, prepare the medication because uh, continuous contact with the medication, some, some farms, they are afraid to get a risk for cancer. And instead of that, the company, now they are producing robotics and robotics now, they can prepare all the medications. Um, um, they can prepare for all oncologic medication. You are just put a standard concentration and uh, put the package for, for medications. Uh, the increased team, I mean, in, any oncologic medication, any, any anti cancer medication, just you put it and they give order, they can prepare, to, prepare it, reconstitution, uh, make reconstitution, then until uh, they can give you a dispense with the, with the final bag. Uh, another uh, system, they have a robotic also for outpatient. For outpatient, they can prepare it, they are using now, and um, uh, they, can, they can prepare it um uh, like uh, you have a bulk of medications and uh, they are cut it down uh, each single tablet they are distributed as a uh, unit dose system and also for uh, there's uh, robotic for unit dose and there is robotic also for outpatient for outpatient they have prepared the medications and put it to the, put the package a label and and they give you final package to the patient yes they're both of them they are using now uh, Doctor, ask any such uh, initiative taken in your field? I'm sorry? Okay. Uh, the same question, artificial uh, intelligence. Any such uh, initiative taken in your field? An in initiative? Initiative, yes. Yeah, yes, already exists now in Saudi. Yes, yes, it is, it is there now. Just uh, today, I visit one of the biggest hospitals uh, King Khalid American City, they are using robotic now for unit dose system. So it's very big, it's very huge and very impressive now. Um, it's even uh, some, some of them, uh, like in Pesa Special Hospital, they are using now robotic for oncology. Yeah, they are using for oncology because they are oncology center, for, um, they are using, they are treating all the type of oncologies and they are preparing a lot of medication and they are using robotic system for, uh, for oncology. And it's not only for, uh, for oncology, also for outpatient, because they have a very huge, uh, uh, very huge uh, preparing of medications and they are using now, yes. And now recently some people, because the people now think about robotic for, uh, for community pharmacy, and instead of, of, of uh, let the pharmacist, let the patient come and uh, take uh, OTC medication like paracetamol, any very simple medication they are regularly utilizing. You put a machine, uh, robotic, you are just uh, looks like uh, um, uh, Coca-Cola machines and they, are, they install it. I have seen it in the, in the market now. 
here in, in Saudi. I, I, I remember I, I, I was, it was very impressive for me. It looks like a Coca-Cola machine. And um, he chose one medication. There is a picture. He chose uh, an anid paracetamol. They give you a list of paracetamol type of the company. And he won't choose this one. He, he will be able electronically. Then he get the, the medication. It's very impressive and, and excellent, really. You, you can use it also in the community farms. You can use it also for court because some people they're using now for hospital um, uh, with uh, as uh, outpatient dispensing and instead of because you know in, in, the, in the high workload there is um, uh, what called cardiovascular medications and very complicated medication you need to check and double check and go detail some of them is regular like paracetamol uh, some derma medications uh, ointment or cream but sometimes they put the autism medication in one machine and um, and dispense just specific high risk medications insulin and etc and tell them the remaining you can get it back get them from from one machine get just go put your id number and put your number of prescription they are dispensing to you right away it is there now Thank you, Dr. Yusuf. On behalf of uh, the Saudi Patient Safety Center, we would like to thank Dr. Yusuf al -Aumi and the audience for their active participation uh, as a part of the Saudi Patient Safety Center effort to provide you with timely topic and interesting speaker. We would appreciate it if you would would fill out the evaluation survey sent to your email after the session thank you for joining us today and we look forward to welcoming you back in future webinar thank you again and goodbye okay thank you very much i appreciate it dr samah and i appreciate all the audience to participate uh, uh, and attend this lecture thanks a lot